Danielle, take one mark. Marcella, take two. When I have moments where I feel like I'm, you know, having a bad day, I'm having a, a moment, I don't try to change it. That's the big thing for me. I have embraced acceptance. I have learned to not identify with my feelings and see them as passing moments, things that just pass through. And my therapist has helped me a lot with understanding that our emotions and our feelings are here to tell us something. We don't necessarily need to fight them. We just be with them, you know? And that doesn't mean, and when I say that, it, I understand that some feelings are overwhelming. And so I think it's important if there are people who are dealing with heavy, overwhelming feelings that you find someone you you can trust to, to sit with you with them. But for me, just my own personal journey, when I have a, a tough time, I just sit and I say, okay, where am I feeling this feeling in my body? What could this be telling me? What could this be showing me? These are these feelings are here to serve me, not to break me down. It's that mindset shift and being able to understand that it's very human and very normal to not always be like on cloud nine. I think with social media and with a lot of what we're seeing, we, we see highlight reels of people's lives. And so maybe it does feel like we should always be happy. And I, and I do think there's a baseline of being able to feel secure and stable. But as far as the pressure of feeling like you always have to show up and be feeling great, that's not the case. It's almost accepting life as a whole. It's, it's the range. It's taking the good with the bad and understanding that Without one, there wouldn't be the other. So that's kind of how I've been able to counter those, those feelings is, is actually not by countering them, it's by just allowing. So my inner monologue is currently under construction. <laughs> just, just leave it at that. I am very hard on myself. This was something I didn't even realize until I took time to sit with myself. It, it takes time to realize even what your inner monologue is. A lot of times we're going, going, going. And so, you know, taking the time to sit with that and realize, okay, if I think this, I must be telling myself that, you know what I mean? So I'm actually in the process of adjusting my inner monologue from being hard on myself to being able to make mistakes. Hey, guess what? Mistakes are okay, they're allowed. It's just love, like it just goes back to love. My inner dialogue is all about going back to self-love, that's it. And so it's under construction because sometimes I can get in my head, my inner monologue, I'm learning how to turn it off. Being able to go, okay, I'm spiraling a bit or I'm going down a rabbit hole right now. This isn't healthy for me, this isn't serving me right now. So let me go choose to do something different. Maybe that means I go take a walk. Maybe that means I put on Netflix. It doesn't always have to be, oh, I'm gonna go meditate. It could just be like, I need to watch YouTube videos and eat pizza right now. That's what I need to stop my inner critic. So it's just about just being easy with yourself and making adjustments in the moment, staying flexible. Staying flexible has helped in my healing process by understanding that at different moments, I may need different things. So it's not always a one size fits all. For me, staying present and being grounded is about being able to feel what I need in that moment, and that maybe changes. You know, maybe in one moment when I'm overthinking, going for a walk is a great option. In another time, it's not. Like I said, maybe I need to just like watch YouTube videos for 30 minutes and not think about anything. We give everyone else breaks, we don't give ourselves a break. It doesn't make any sense. Mental health has always been something that I've struggled with, but wasn't quite aware that I was struggling with it. I had moments where I had gone to therapy before I dealt with severe anxiety. 2020 was, was a catalyst for change, but there had been a lot that I had been dealing with and I would almost say bulldozing through life. I think the reason why 2020 was so impactful was because when I had that moment to sit with myself with nothing to distract myself with, no goals, no people, nothing. There was just nothing more but to face what I had been running from for so long. 2020 was a catalyst for change 
more than anything, but the issues that revealed themselves at, during 2020 had been there and had been building my whole life. I just don't know if I would have taken the time I needed to take if it wasn't for that pause. And I feel so blessed that I could take that time to reevaluate myself and my life and the things that, that needed to be looked at and changed. I feel very grateful because it changed my life in a really challenging at times, but positive way. So I feel very grateful. My mental health words for this upcoming year is certainly self-compassion, uh, flexibility, and feel it, sit with it. Don't run from it. And if the feeling is too hard to sit with by myself, it's okay to get help and have someone I trust sit with it with me. I feel like this stuff can get really heavy. And even me, I like to analyze and you know, figure out the answer and, and this and that. But yeah, I know that I'm always gonna be growing and I'm always gonna be changing. I'm on this journey, so I might as well, you know, make the best of it. During COVID, when I did do therapy, it was through Zoom. So it was it was all digital, it was, it was through a screen. I was like, is this gonna be weird? Uh, essentially, it was, it was totally fine. And I would even say that it made me feel a little bit safer at first because I felt like I was in my own space and I had a little bit of a, I, I don't know, like a, like a security, like a, I'm okay. My big thing when it comes to a therapist, it took me six, six people. I went through six therapists before I found someone that felt right for me. And I remember feeling bad after like the fourth, I was like, <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it's me. It's not you. When you are connecting with the right person, you'll feel safe. And it's important to um, keep going and, and keep looking for new people if you need to. Keep shifting it out until it feels right for you. For me, when I did connect with the right person, one session, we, we were able to just do so much. It was like every session was so powerful. It doesn't matter if it takes you 10 people, you deserve to be sitting with someone who you feel safe with, who you feel like is gelling with you and you will get better results. You will get the best results when you're able to, to do that. I felt it pretty early when, when it was the right one. I felt like, oh, I'm so glad that I waited. I was like, I'm so glad that I kept going and I listened to my, my intuition because when I did connect with, with my therapist now, who's amazing, it's, it's been life-changing. That's the most important thing is that we aren't alone. Even if people don't feel comfortable sharing it, We've all been there. It's okay to feel this way. This is totally normal. It's just people don't talk about it. And so that's like, that's the only challenge. So that's why it's so important for me to talk about it. And I love that we're doing this because it just needs to be talked about. So people don't feel like something's wrong with them, especially with social media and stuff like that. It's just really important that people know that feeling lonely is, that happens. You know, feeling sad happens, you know, it's, and there's nothing wrong with you. It's just life, right? So I like, I feel you, thank you. Like I, yeah. My tip for anyone out there who's struggling with any mental health challenge would be to just be easy on yourself and know that you're not alone. For me, what I've learned is healing is all about balance. If you're in a state of feeling you know, polarities, you know, two extremes. The best way to move towards healing is to find, find a balance, find your balance and understand that it's not a one size fits all and be open to other people's input, but also be able to, you know, take things from different people. Don't feel like just because something that works for someone else, if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. It's not a one size fits all. You're not alone. It's important for me to tell you guys that you are worthy of investment in your own investment and time within yourself. You are worthy of being happy. You're worthy of enjoying your life. If someone you loved didn't think that they were worthy of enjoying life, you would say, what? Of course you are. So I'm here to tell you you're worthy of investing in yourself. 
and um, I hope that you do that.